Okay, I'm working on a 2005 Infiniti G35. I've already looked at it a little bit off camera, but this one, it's had a ton of parts thrown at it. It's been to the dealer, it's been to different shops and programmers, key for just a bunch of stuff. This guy talked to me a while back and ultimately the main problem he was chasing is the battery light it was on the dash while the car was running uh simply told him just get a good quality uh oem or oem equivalent alternator and he shouldn't have any problems i guess he didn't listen or whatnot but there's a new alternator on there it's been actually i don't know three four alternators Put on the one that's there. It's not OEM. It's got your typical reman sticker or whatever. Um, I guess like body module, the fuse panels, the power distribution, whatever. A bunch of crap's been done. Some keys and everything. So I don't know ultimately what what really's been done. But the symptoms of the car is it. It starts, runs idle, but it won't accelerate. It's like in limp mode. If I scan it, this P1065 is current. This one actually was not there the other day. And I did notice today before I bought it in the shop, it was cranking no start. Kind of like an immobilizer issue, so I don't know what, what's going on with that. But... If basically if you look up this trouble code and the computer is down here it's saying that it's losing basically a constant voltage supply that keeps its I guess memory alive which I checked the other day and I'll get you a shot of that the wiring and the fuse all the way up to the computer is good and it is providing voltage and so at times you would basically call a bad engine computer but i don't want to do that not just yet we might have a bad computer because what the computer needs which is power all the time is getting to the computer yet it's still logging this code so we might need a computer but the fact that and i'll show you Hopefully it'll start. If you look at... It's charging up to around 17 volts. And the lights are flashing. Battery light was on, but I have the alternator two pin connector unplugged because I wanted to remove it off the control system, yet it's still on its own providing 17 volts. I don't want to condemn an ECM with the whole electrical system being overcharged to this crazy amount. So I wanted to get you a quick shot of the I guess new alternator again looks like a probably cheap aftermarket and that is how I was running it without the connector the small two pin connector connected okay so part of what I want to do is prove out a point of first and foremost the alternator needs to be replaced Not only just verbally because he's been told and done multiple alternators already, but I want to get that voltage to come down. Now, also, I believe that the whole vehicle is in limp mode, not just the engine computer, uh, and I didn't show you on camera, but the traction and tranny also have weird funky codes, but... I believe everything is just going crazy from the high voltage. So I want to be able to 
isolate, remove the high voltage that the alternator is making. And I want to clear that code in the engine computer and actually all modules. And I want to see if I can get it out of limp mode and be able to accelerate. So what I've done, what I'm thinking of doing is I've unplugged the main B plus cable that hooks up to the alternator and actually shares over to the starter. Um, I'm definitely uh, insulating it so that I don't have any uh, fires. And I'm going to start it, run it, probably with a jump pack so I can maintain a little bit higher of uh, close to 12 volts and see if I can accelerate normal and get rid of those trouble codes. Okay, so I'm back in. Hook the battery back up. Uh, I forgot to turn the meter on. Uh, we'll use this, the scanner. So we're at 12 volts. We'll key on only first. Gonna see if I can erase the trouble code. Yes. Okay, no codes to start with. I'm gonna cycle the key. Uh, you remember while it was running with the high voltage, a uh, bunch of lights flashing and so on and so forth. So let's see if that goes away. And I guess we'll pay attention here to see what voltage. Just off the bat, um, no crazy flashing, <clears throat> but since at that time I only was in, or I only read the engine control unit, I'm going to read all modules and then delete all codes that come up. Now I know it looks like some of those, like the engine control, the transmission didn't come up, but for some reason they come up again, the B-scan, kind of like on the back end, and they do populate and they do come up, read, and have codes. Okay, so as you can see, we do have communication with the, uh, at least important modules. And let's take a look, because... The engine, okay. There's two codes in the engine, two different codes, obviously, uh, which is funny because we've not even started the engine. Actually, scratch that. Uh, we did start it, started on film, but, and then we did shut it off, and we are now rereading. So, okay, this would make sense. So, there's some other troubles that are present that. Funny enough, aren't even being shown when the um, other code uh, pops up. So we've essentially reread the engine computer after isolating the alternator and clearing that uh, memory power supply code that was present, which obviously did not come back. So that's a good sign. These are some of the other ones. So let me... Get rid of these four right now, like I said. Then I'll run it. We'll reread. I'm sure those O2 codes will come back, but I want to see again, make sure we're at a limp mode. Okay, I've got jump pack. And I was able to close the hood. Uh, let's see if we can accelerate. <laughs> All right, that is uh, a whole lot more than that, what it was able to do. So, forward or backwards. Moving, it's not in limp mode. 
okay. Uh, drove it around the building. Let's just double check, make sure it's just the O2 codes in the engine computer before I shut it off. But again, no crazy tripping out, wigging out from high crazy voltage. Um, we are still running off of the jump box. So computer's in a happy state. Actually, the whole vehicle, all other modules are in a good, happy state. And there we go. Now, again, these are nothing to do with what he was telling me. He did tell me at some point he had done some key work because one of the shops replaced some module, probably a body module or something, and then it wouldn't start. And so I don't know what all has been done up to this point. There's obviously some sort of key issue intermittently, but as far as the limp mode problem, it's all due to a bad alternator. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it on that one. There's not much more that I can do um, off camera up to this point. I didn't have to do some preliminary checks. I had to make sure that the computer was receiving that voltage. So I had to pin that out, figure it out, take a reading, make sure that was good. I ended up having to check the alternator, make sure that was getting all its proper voltages on that two pin connector, as well as obviously make sure it's grounded good. So all those tests up to this point led me to attempt to prove out this method because again, not only are we dealing with yes, a bad alternator that's simply overcharging all on its own because the control connector is off, but with the possibility also of a bad engine computer also being an issue. And I don't want to go to the customer and tell them you need an alternator and you need a computer and so on and so forth when one could be related to the other. So that's why I wanted to prove out by isolating the alternator from that B plus cable and run the vehicle, see if the rest of the car and modules will be happy not being exposed to the high 17 volts. And clearly we can see the rest of the car and modules are now working normal. So now I have some proof and some ground to stand on when I tell the customer that guess what, you need another alternator, but you have to get a good OEM one or an equivalent good well-known manufacturer that would make an alternator that won't fail right out the box and start overcharging. So again, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Hope you learned something from it. And now I can go tell the customer exactly what he needs and I can get this car gone. So until next time, that's all. We'll see you on the next one. All of that and the customer almost ended up with a free jump box. I totally forgot I left it in there. Alright, he would have been in for a good surprise. Hey, there's the uh, alternator they just put on. Uh, the new one, we didn't even button it all up. Not sure if it was going to work. Uh, this is, the jump box is off, so yeah, we are in the 14 and a half so it's not charging at 17 like it was obviously the battery cable is connected on the alternator and no crazy lights going on so like we confirmed before uh, alternator is causing all the trouble and this replacement alternator is charging properly and not uh, overcharging wigging out the car making it look like it needs more than what uh, is wrong so this one's completely done we'll uh, get it back to the customer and he should be happy